Less than five is, guess what? We're dealing with more percent. So it's finding 100% given another percent. But really, it's becoming, we're using this lesson to become comfortable with what a percent is. It's quantity out of whole. It's part out of a whole, right? And so we're going to be using a lot of the same formulas. So it's helpful if we can recognize the factors. What are factors? And what are multiples of those factors? Well, let's work on that. So factors of 100. 100, right? Multiples in the factors. We could just say there's one multiple of 100. If we had 50, I could say 50. And we're only dealing with factors of 100, right? 100 goes into 100 once. 50 goes into 100 two times. 50 and 100. Um, we could say another factor of 100 is 25. And don't stress too much about this part. Just write down. Well, how many multiples are there? Well, let's see. 25, 50, 75, try that again, 75, right, and then 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, commas here. Okay, what's another one that goes into 100? How about 20? 20, 40, oh goodness, 40, 60, 80, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 10, that's our next one. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Not 20, 70, 80, 90, 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, how about five? I'm not writing all of these down. So let's try some. 5, 10, 15, 20, a whole bunch more, 85, 90, 95, 100. <laughs> and basically, the reason we can figure out is how many multiples of 5 there are is 5 times what equals 100? 20. Okay, same thing on the next one of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, a whole bunch in between. 88, 92, 96, 100. Okay, and again, four times what number equals 100? There's 25 of those numbers if I wrote them all out and counted them. One more, two. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and a whole bunch here. And then we could go 90, 90, how am I going to struggle with that? 92, 94, 96, 98, 100, and there's 50 of those. Okay, and think here, if you a factor of 1 is 1, you would, there'd be 100 of those, right? So we're going to use this idea of trying to match these up, okay, um, to find out some percents. Okay, so this exercise really, don't stress about it. I just want you to start thinking of those things. So uh, the 42 students who use, who played wind instruments represent 75% of the students who are in the band. Okay, 42 students represent 75%. So think back again to when we worked on some, well, probably in the past, and you probably worked with these more than I have, some double number lines, right? So when we're dealing with these, Okay. Keep in mind, okay, we really want to get to 100%. We want it to be 100% over here, right? Um, so we want to ask, 42 is 75% of what number? Now, if you can write a sentence like this, it's going to really help you out deciding what the quantity is and what the whole is, okay? 42 represents 75%. So 42 is 75% of what number, right? So we know it's 75%, okay? So looking at this chart up here, what would be a good number to break it up into? I see 75 right there. Can we break it up into four sections? Let's try it. And don't stress, you're not gonna be doing double number lines the whole time. We just wanna get a visual of what we're gonna be doing with equations. So there's 25%. There's 50%, there's 75%, and there's 100%. So 25%, 50%, 75%, 
75% and 100%. And notice it told us that 42 is 75. Okay? So we want to break this up, right? We know this is zero here, and I have one, two, three sections to get to 42. So if I take 42 and I divide it by three, it's 14. So I can break these up. I can add 14 here and break this up, right? Plus 14, plus 14, that'd be 28. plus 14, that's 42. And then if I add 14 right here, sorry, I'm squeezing this in, it's 56. So how many students are in the band? Well, those students are gonna be represented by 100%. There are 56 students in the band. Okay. So we can match up 42 to 75. If we jump over then to 100, that would have to be 56 equal sections. Real quick, not a lot of room here. Quantity equals percent times whole. Sloppy, I know, but you can figure it out. We've written it enough. 42 is, do you see how the is part here? That goes with our quantity. Do we have a percent? We sure do. I'm gonna change it to a decimal and make that 0 0.75. And then times our whole. I don't know how many students in the band that is. Then if I divide both sides by 0 0.75 because I'm solving for B and I want B to be by itself, I get B or whatever variable equals, hey, guess what? 56. The double number line is just a visual, okay, of the what we work we can do in the equation, okay? Okay, let's look at another couple exercises. Bob's Tire Outlet, so the record number of tires last month. One salesman sold 156 tires, which was 60% of the tires sold in a month. What was the record number of tires? So again, real quick. Don't think that's going to be enough room, but that's okay. Okay. If this is zero, okay, and we know we have 60 right here. So there's some options, right, of 60% that we could use. 60 falls on some things. It calls here. You can go by 20s. We can go by tens, fives. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking twenties, right? Let's try twenties. Okay. So this is going to be 20. I'm sorry. I made these so tight up there. 40, 60, 80, and 100. 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. Now, 60 matches up with 165. So again, this is zero right here. I have to go one, two, three sections. So if I take 165 and divide it by three, it works out to be 55. So that means each section has 55. So plus 55 would put this at 55. Plus 55 here would put this at 110. Plus 55 is 165. Plus 55 would be 220 at 80 percent and if we had another 155 that's 275. So how what was the record number of tires sold? 275. All right so let's try this with our formula percent. 60% and change it to a decimal. Decimal points here, two places left. Now, 60, 165, which was, which is 60%. 60, 60 is that the total number of tires or the quantity, the part? It's the part. So then we solve like we always do. And that this is one or 0 0.60 times X, so I divide. And look at that, 275, which is what we got up here with the visual. So we're doing the same thing, okay? 
Now for the sake of time, I could totally draw a double number line here. Okay, so you can see a visual, but I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of long and I don't think you probably wanna listen anymore in this video. So let's jump right to the quantity part, right? The, the formula. So Kurt has driven, has driven 276 miles of his road trip, but has 70% of the trip left to go. So be careful. He has driven this much, but has 70% left. Well, if he has 70% left, what percent, what is 276? It's 276 is what percent of his trip? Well, if he's got 70 left to go, how much has he driven? 30, right? So 276 is 30% of his, I'll say, total miles. Right? So now if I want to do my equation, like how fast I'm writing quantity, I'm trying to down over, I'm overwriting it, right? This is the is part that goes in for quantity. 30% I change to a decimal. And I don't know what his total miles are. Oh look at I'm getting rid of the point three. So it's multiplying, so I undo multiplying with dividing, and I get 276 divided by 0.3. 920. Okay, so it is what was x? x was his total miles, right? So he has 920 miles. Let's just make sure we're answering the question being asked. How many more miles does he have? Uh, well, he's already, he has a 920 and he's driven 276. So if you subtract them, he has 644 miles to go. I hope you see that what we're doing here, guys, is more of the same. I want to give you a visual. I want you to be comfortable that if you know 1%, if you can get it to 100, you can figure out totals when you're just given a portion.